Hi, this is Pastor Josh from First Baptist to Queen. We're taking a look this week at what occurred on Easter week leading up to Jesus' death and then resurrection on Sunday. What he was going through that week as well as what was just happening in general that week. And so today is Thursday of Easter week. And on that day, this is from Luke 22, starting in verse 7. Uh, then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Now, this was not a, a, a very easy thing to accomplish. This was something they were very familiar with, uh, but it was very involved as well. It, it meant going to the temple to see the sacrifice of their lamb uh, for their Passover dinner. It meant cooking the lamb and preparing the rest of the symbolic elements of the meal. Uh, this wasn't quick by any means, but it was extremely important. This was an extremely important role to prepare this highly significant meal for the very one of whom it symbolizes, Jesus. Verse 14, when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after he had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. It is very important that the new covenant guaranteeing heaven would be sealed with blood. And not just any blood, but the blood of God himself. For that is really the only way that payment could be high enough to remove every sin from every human being who has ever lived. It also shows us how much greater Jesus is from us. You know, whereas our death, my death, is not enough to even pay for one of my sins, we would still, I would still go on to pain and punishment, but uh, only the death of God had the power enough to remove all sins from me, from you, from every single one of us once we believe. Verse 21, But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another which of them it could be who was going to do this. So Jesus just straight out says it. One of you guys sitting at this table right now is going to betray me in the next few moments. Uh, over in Luke chapter 22, verse 39, uh, he went with his disciples somewhere. Uh, Luke writes, He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. Now, it was getting later and later into the night, and it was normal for them, is what Luke writes there, it was normal for them to head out to the Mount of Olives when they were in town and spend some time there. And that was probably the very reason Judas knew exactly where to find Jesus. You know, they went, Judas had left, he had gone to get the mob to come and arrest Jesus. Uh, down in verse 47 of Luke 22, Luke writes, While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. So he's being held at the high priest's house, at the chief priest, and it, it, he's essentially holding Jesus until the Jewish ruling council can be assembled and they can have a trial. And then night would be turning into morning, overnight, middle of the night, once it gets on into Friday, uh, Jesus would then be taken in to see the Sanhedrin. But as Thursday came to a close, Jesus was arrested and he was 
then be taken and mocked and beaten. Uh, and his disciples ran. They ran scared. Peter tried to hide in the crowd that was following along to keep up with the trial. John was there nearby doing the same thing, but they were scared for their own lives. And that's where Jesus was on Thursday. He had spent time uh, with the disciples giving new meaning to the Passover meal, which we now partake of and call it the Lord's Supper in all the symbolism of representing Jesus and his sacrifice for us and our sins. And he was arrested and uh, taken. And all this took place on that Thursday. And tomorrow we're going to look at Friday, Good Friday, why we call it Good Friday, what makes it so special. And we're going to see exactly what happened on that day. So check it out tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today, and I will see you in the next one.